To install Samurai Web Testing Framework on VirtualBox, first download the Samurai installation. It'll come in as a zip file, and it should be around 2.7 gigabytes. Inside of the zip folder, there's going to be a VMware image folder. And inside of that is going to be the disk, the virtual disk. These are VMDK files. There's going to be some parts, 1 through 11. And then there'll be a main VMDK file that'll tell VirtualBox how to organize the disk. Over in the VirtualBox console, create a new virtual machine. In this case, we're calling it Samurai WTF2 and change the type to Linux Ubuntu. Depending on how much RAM is available on the host computer, Try to give Samurai a couple of gigabytes of memory. Remember that the memory in VirtualBox is not virtualized. That means that when the virtual machine is running, it's actually taking the amount of memory that is specified. You need enough memory on the host to account for all the virtual machines that are running plus the host operating system itself, in this case Windows 7. When you get to the next screen, don't create a virtual hard drive. The VMDK files is the hard drive for Samurai. When the Samurai was created in VMware, it was the virtual machine was created then saved, so it already has a virtual hard drive. So you can just say do not add a virtual hard drive, or if you create a virtual hard drive, you'll need to erase it later. Once the virtual machine is created, go to Settings. On the system, you can change the amount of RAM here. You can also go ahead and make the primary boot device the hard disk or CD. On most machines, you can uncheck floppy and change the boot order. For the number of processors, it again depends on the hardware that's available in the host operating system. It's safe to put two if supported. But if you pick two, you may get a warning about invalid settings detected. You'll need to go back to the motherboard tab and check off the enable IO APIC. For acceleration, make sure that enable VTX is, en is enabled. It should be by default. If it's not, chances are in the BIOS, the VTX is not enabled for your system. You may need to reboot, go into the BIOS settings, and enable the VTX. For the display, go ahead and give 128 megabytes of RAM to the video. Samurai is, does use a graphical user interface, so it's good to have RAM set aside just for the video processing. You can check off enable 3D acceleration. You do not need to check off enable 2D. For the storage, since we didn't add a controller, there isn't going to be one. In this step, we're going to click add hard disk but we're going to do that later uh, after we figure out where the folder is for this virtual machine and copy those VMDK files over to it. For audio, you can set it however. Networking, the NAT adapter is fine, but if you're going to do scanning with programs like Nmap, you're probably not going to want to use NAT because the NAT table can fill up and cause a delay or missed packets. If you're going to do scanning with the virtual machine directly on a network that you're connected to, it's best to bridge the adapter. In this case, we can bridge the wireless card or the Ethernet card. You can go ahead and bridge the other card if you want, whichever one you didn't pick in the first step. And if you're going to use this Samurai with other virtual machines, be sure to enable the host-only network. The host-only adapter is a virtual adapter that all of the virtual machines that have the host only adapter enabled um, will have and it'll put them on the same virtual network so it's as if they're plugged into some kind of switch together so they'll be able to see each other on the same local LAN. It's not a real LAN, it's a virtual LAN. 
Additionally, the host operating system itself is a member of this LAN. So all the machines can see each other, but the nice thing is is that the um, anyone connecting to the computer remotely doesn't see this host-only adapter. It's just sort of a virtual private network that's running on the host itself. The fourth adapter, you can set up another virtual network card or just leave it blank. USB enable 2.0, go ahead and enable that in case you want to plug in some USB devices. But if you're going to use the USB in the guest operating system, Samurai, you'll need to install the guest editions. And then for shared photos, you can set up a share between your host and your guest so that you can copy files over. So once the virtual machine is set up, there's going to be a folder created by VirtualBox in the C users, your username, VirtualBox directory. So in this case, it's Samurai WTF2, the one we created. If you look inside, you'll see that there's a couple of VBox files which um, contain the specifications for the virtual machine, but there's no hard drive because we didn't create one. So there's no VDI file or VMDK file. This is where you're going to go over to the zip file that you downloaded for Samurai. And inside of the zip, you're going to find the VMware image uh, images folder. And you're going to copy that and paste it right here into the Samurai WTF2 folder that we created, that VirtualBox created. That takes a long time, so I've already copied one over. And so in the Samurai WTF, I copied that folder over earlier so you can see what it looks like. And inside is those VMDK files. So now we see where they're at, we would be able to go back to our virtual machine and we would be able to create that virtual hard disk under the SATA connector. So go to storage, controller, SATA and click the add disk and then choose existing disk. Then you need to find your folder and you need to select the VMDK file, the main one, not the actual disk part files down here, but the main VMDK file that ties them all together. And you'll click open and that'll add the hard drive. Once that's done, you can start the guest. I'll go ahead and delete this machine that we created just for the demo purposes. And then up here in the one that I'd already created earlier, which has the folder already inside, we can see the disk attached. So we go to storage and SATA. We can see that VMDK file that we selected. And then, of course, the location is C users, your username, VirtualBox VMs, and then that Samurai subfolder. So then you can start your virtual machine. It's going to take a while, and it'll seem like it's stuck on the splash screen. You probably won't even see the entire splash screen when it's loading, especially if your hard drive is slow, like a 5400 RPM drive. Just wait. It should eventually load. Then once it starts, you'll be able to see the um, Samurai running on your host machine. Now remember, you need to install the guest editions, especially if when you start up Samurai for the very first time, after it finally loads, your screen is very small. That's because you don't have the guest video drivers installed. Those come with the guest editions. Also, USB won't work, copy and paste won't work, and neither will drag and drop. Now you will be able to go ahead and set up the shared clipboard and the drag and drop as bi-directional. You may need to go ahead and set these now. However, if you don't have the guest editions installed, they still won't work. And for USB, the same thing. So go to devices and insert guest edition CD image. Once that's inserted, it'll be as if you took a real CD and plugged it into the CD tray even though it's a virtual machine. And you should see the image show up. So if we open up a terminal, we should be able to see that. So 
See if we can find that CD. And there it is using this icon down here, the Dolphin File Manager. And go ahead and pick as root because you can't run the VirtualBox um, loader unless you have root privileges. Let's see what folder that was in. It says it's in root, media, VBox editions, 436, so on. Let's try to find that over here. Okay, then we can CD into the VBox editions. All right, inside you're gonna see a VBox Linux editions run. Again, remember you have to be root, so you can use sudo VBox Linux editions run. But we're not quite ready to do that yet. First, make sure you install the prerequisite software. So we're gonna do a sudo apt get update. And that'll update the local files to have a list of the latest software that's available on the different archives out on the internet. Of course, you'll need to make sure that your bridged adapters are working by this point, otherwise you won't have an internet connection. We looked at that earlier. So after the apt-get update is done and we have the latest packages listed on our computer that are available, we're going to install a few packages. So again, you need sudo privileges. You can do a sudo-s if you just want to stay root. So you don't have to keep typing sudo. And then we're going to do an app get install. And we need DKMS, the dynamic kernel, kernel module support. It's going to let the drivers install as kernel modules. And then we're going to get the latest Linux headers. So Linux header, headers generic. And then we're also going to get build essential. So you'll need to install those three packages. Now, I've already installed them, and it looks like all three of them are already the latest version, so I don't need to install them again. If you need to install them, it's going to take a few minutes, so just let the whole process run, and when it's finished, then you can go ahead and run the installer for VirtualBox. It's going to be the VBox Linux editions run. Let that run all the way. When it gets done, reboot the system when Samurai starts back up, it should be in full screen mode like this since the video drivers and such will be installed. If you get the order wrong, if you, if you install the VirtualBox editions before you install the prerequisite software, it will probably install fine, but when you reboot the system, some of the features may not work. The screen may not be um, full size, or the drag and drop shared clipboard, or especially the USB devices may not work. So. If those don't work, try making sure you did this step first with the latest and then go back and rerun it. Also, if you update VirtualBox itself later on when new editions come out, don't forget to come back in and reinstall the guest editions again because the guest editions for an older version of VirtualBox don't always work with newer versions once you've downloaded and installed it.